There have been many benefits of me dual booting a Windows and Linux OS for almost 15 years. I get to have the best of both worlds. I marvel at the progression of technology and support for Linux as it happens. I get to hate myself for installing Windows 10 like the rest of the world has to. And I get to test some bleeding edge stuff on both sides of my SSD. Look, I'm a massive online nerd. This sort of thing excites me. So it was to my surprise that back in March 2016, Payday 2 got a native Linux port. Was this out of kindness by Overkill? Well, kinda. The reason for its existence is due to those Steam machines, remember those, which ran SteamOS 2.0, a hard fork of Debian, and Payday 2 was one of the games that was advertised as working on those machines. Overkill were required to make a native port back before Proton was a glimmer in Valve's eye and Wine being finicky to set up. For those with a Steam Deck, this may sound a little bit familiar, you have the successor to this idea, SteamOS 3.0, which is Arch-based, not Debian-based, and seems to have fared a lot better with more time in the oven. Payday 2, meanwhile, is a constantly updating game with a code base based on Lua GIT, not originally, and a driving engine that was, uh, shall we say, ill-suited and unoptimized for a heisting game. That and it's 32-bit, which probably doesn't help with the memory issues the game suffers from. That's a whole other video. For right now though, the ports on PC do have some minor differences in their implementations, and this video serves to document those differences and oddities for you, the viewer at home. Strap in! To set some expectations, it's still the same unoptimized diesel engine that everyone has had to deal with since 2002. However, unlike on Windows, Overkill, in a rare case of good forethought, made the game 64-bit on Linux. Kind of. Pseudo 64-bit, if you will. Look, all you need to know is that making a game 64-bit makes the memory usage of an app on Linux be handled properly or better. That's how I understand it, at least. The game, unfortunately, still has the 4 gig limit of RAM 32-bit does. Uh, it's not perfect, unfortunately. Coming off of the back of that oddity is vertex colouring. In the game, it's a little weird. It does work, but not always. A prominent example of it not working is a prop you've probably seen several times if you played this game over the past few years. The door leading to the panic room is red. However, on Linux, that door has remained grey, and Overkill have never managed to fix it. This door is my sworn enemy. One day, it will be fixed, whether it be by my own hand or someone else's, or Overkill's. What secrets do you hold, door? Get the idea. Moving on, for reasons unknown, drill screens do not activate the sickening white bloom effect when staring at them. What's even weirder is that this does happen in other situations, such as on certain computer screens, shirts, lights, and places it shouldn't be activated. So it's not broken, but it appears to be inconsistently applied. I like this being broken, the effect is terrible, and there should be a toggle for it to be off, but still, I'd be lying if I didn't include it here. Let's switch from a graphical issue that I like to a graphical issue that I don't like. Whether it's because of some ill-formatted material config, the White House has a room on the first floor that displays every normal map reference in vitmaster.material-config as if it's trying to show all of them all at once, and it leads to this oddity. The wall moves with new grooves, and I'm surprised this has remained unpatched, considering the easiest fix is just to delete all the references to normal maps in that file. In fact, that's exactly what I've done. Stranger still is that none of the items that are referenced in this file seem to lose their normal mapping, although I haven't done a large-scale sweep, so don't take my word for it. Bit of a broken room, but otherwise harmless. Something else that is actually broken is Henry's Rock, or Henry's Phallic Member, if you're so inclined with the crass profanity. It's uh, not undeserved, I'll admit. The issue here is one of some very odd game performance. At the start, it runs horribly, as in barely pushing 30 FPS, which doesn't make any sense, as a similar heist beneath the mountain runs basically flawlessly and has more open areas to boot. No, this isn't to do with missing portals or inherent bad map optimization because after you reach a certain point in the heist, this happens. I did not do anything to the video. Your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. That is what it's like. For some reason, after meeting you know who, the map suddenly starts running really well. In fact, here's a performance graph of this exact play session. Just look at the drop off. 
Now, if I were to guess here, some kind of process behind the scenes on the map is causing it to lag initially. Maybe it's to do with enemy spawn, some kind of logic screw-up. Maybe the game is just trying to load something when it can't. I honestly have no clue. This is uh, guesswork. But it's something I feel worth investigating. No? Anyway, that was a peek into the wondrous world of the Linux port. It's truly a different world of experiences, if you call mostly minor issues a different world of experiences. And with that, I'm gonna go to sleep. I have a freelancer video to make soon. Bye-bye.